Hi there. Welcome to Prices at the Pumps, our Wednesday edition with Dan McTagg. I'm Scott Squires. Dan, welcome back. Let's get right into it. Uh, where are you seeing prices trending in this region? Scott, we talked about it. February is going to be a very slow month, and I think we're going to see prices drop a little bit, maybe two or three cents a litre for gasoline, and likely a much better decrease for diesel. Of course, I'm assuming that the regular markets apply here. Uh, because we're seeing that across every other province in Canada where we've seen diesel drop, we've seen gasoline prices drop, although they tipped up a little bit. But it won't be enough, I think, to stop us by Friday seeing here in Nova Scotia a bit of a decrease for both diesel and gasoline. Uh, the same would apply to most Atlantic provinces as well. But uh, again, they have a very secret formula, a uh, formula that tends to change uh, more by <laughs> rule of thumb than any particular principle of, of the market. So uh, I would say that overall for Atlantic Canada, we're looking at a a small but pleasant welcome decrease. On the home heating stove oil side, however, furnace oil, not such a pleasant uh, outcome. We saw a big spike, especially in Newfoundland, 35 cents a litre in one day. Again, that's not what the markets were indicating, but nevertheless, uh, there's not likely to be much of a reprieve there. Lucky if we get a one or two cent decrease uh, for uh, furnace oil, stove oil, and heating oil uh, and the like uh, come, uh, come Friday. This region seeing its first real cold snap of the winter. Uh, as I talk to you today, it's about minus 18 with uh, a wind chill colder. We're supposed to have record cold temperatures in this area on the weekend, perhaps minus 30, minus 40 wind chill. How do you see that potentially affecting the price, certainly of home heating fuel? Well, normally it would. In the physical market, it definitely has to because there has been a severe tightness in supply. But we also have another market that seems to be acting in, in concert with the headlines. And they're really nervous about, uh, you know, the increase in, uh, in interest rates, especially in the United States, but also here in Canada. Uh, so that could mean a bit of a, a hedge for us, at least for the next few days. But no doubt natural gas, propane, and ultimately diesel, jet fuel, home heating fuel prices may go up as early as uh, this time next week. But for now, I think it's uh, best case scenario. We don't see much movement there unless, of course, extraordinary measures are used and applied. I have to predict prices based on the markets and I can give everyone a two day heads up. But when you have a regime and there are several that are involved in Atlantic Canada, that each and every one of them are separate, it's kind of hard to figure out how they're thinking. I'm not good at guessing minds. Were that the case, I would be picking and probably have a better chance of picking uh, this week's lottery numbers. And as well, Dan, you know, you were a member of parliament for a number of years, uh, and now you follow what happens, obviously, in the industry and, and what's happening with government officials. And I saw an interesting tweet the other day from a, a liberal member of parliament, uh, and I'm just going to read it here quickly. Um, Kevin Wong, I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right, but uh, his tweet was, I support hashtag climate action. The clean fuel regulation is not that. To comply, Canada will need to import ethanol from the U.S., which has a greater carbon intensity than gasoline. And then he goes on to make a comment, you know, about how he feels about some of the, the policies. But maybe just for the layperson, break that down. And what exactly is he saying? Well, Kevin Vong is an independent member from downtown Toronto, I think, who's seen the light, um, understands our obligations on climate, but also understands the implications of the federal gov liberal government's second carbon tax, supported by the NDP, supported by the Greens. That second carbon tax is going to lead to a much higher price for energy. We've talked about this, you and I, before. And it's actually part of a study that I did with Keynes for Affordable Energy back in October. It's there on the site, affordableenergy.ca, with LFX and Associates, with uh, noted economist uh, Ross McKittrick. And it pointed out that in order to get that ethanol mix into gasoline to drop emissions for refineries, well, you're going to be looking at a lot of that uh, um, ethanol being imported from the United States, which produces a lot of its energy by a coal. So in other words, we're farming out our emissions drops. We're getting bringing in ethanol. And that may sound great on the surface. You're going to actually see oil companies. Esso did it the other day, Exxon and uh, Esso up in Alberta saying, hey, guess what? We're mixing more uh, and blending more ethanol. Wonderful news story. The problem is that when you blend ethanol with gasoline, you don't get the same mileage. Your mileage tanks. Uh, second of all, uh, it only goes so far. Uh, you can't get your 15% reduction that the clean fuel standard is requiring 
uh, without uh, without further going towards a carbon credit market. And that's where we think by 2030, you're going to be adding another 30 cents a liter for heating oil, rather, sorry, for diesel, transportation diesel, and for gasoline. By the way, on that note, uh, it was my work three years ago that stopped the federal government from using that second carbon tax, the clean fuel standard, to apply to your furnace oil and your, your heating oil. And you don't have to take my word for it. Ask every province in the Atlantic uh, where they got the information from. It was for me. Maybe it's a bit of a savings, but uh, I think uh, in terms of what Mr. Vong has said, the Member of Parliament, what I have recommended, we need to scrap these both these taxes. They're not going to stop climate. They're certainly not going to uh, you know, prevent Canada from uh, adopting cleaner energies. We need to take a more of a stick, rather a carrot, a carrot approach rather than the stick approach that we're seeing right now. At the end of the day, it's only costing consumers a lot more with nothing to prove. And uh, this may be a crystal ball question, but... Uh, based on Mr. Vong's uh, tweet and what he said in the House of Commons, do you see this potentially, and this is again just from your point of view, but do you potentially see this as maybe the beginning of perhaps more voices within the sitting government saying these kinds of things and raising these kinds of questions and concerns? Well, if they don't, then they're running at variance with what uh, the big, is the biggest issue right now in Canada is affordability. And we're driving out of unaffordability are energy prices. And to a large extent, inflation driven by these climate policies. They don't achieve the climate goals that you want. So that's the first thing. But the second one is that they're making life a lot more expensive for everybody. I don't need to make an argument. When I talk about this across the country on various uh, platforms, I always make point of what's happening in the Maritimes, that you're seeing prices go through the roof. It's unaffordable. It's unrealistic. And it's the kind of demagoguery that uh, I would never expect of elected officials. However, there will be a federal election someday. And I think those who are advocating these policies, I call them woke policies, that are damaging the economy, damaging affordability, undermining the Canadian dream, and of course, preventing energy, Canadian energy from getting to the rest of the world. I think those politicians will be shown the door. And I uh, know something about that. So uh, be very cautious because I think uh, the political posturing has no place in the pocketbooks of every consumer in this country. And Dan, we'll dig into this uh, in another episode of Prices at the Pumps uh, a week or two down the road. But something I want to talk to you about at that time is how you can support climate change or, or uh, climate action, as Mr. Vaughn put it, and still talk about some of these things in terms of uh, fossil fuels and otherwise. But again, that's yep. a topic for another day because I know that's going to take a few minutes to talk about. But right now, before yep. we let you go, it's great to have you with us here on the Saltwire Network on Prices at the Pumps. But you're not with us all the time. When you're not here on the Saltwire Network, where can folks find you? Yeah, affordableenergy.ca. I'm president of Canadians for Affordable Energy. Of course, Gas Wizard is always the place to get your updates for gas prices. And uh, you can reach me either by email uh, or by phone. All the information is right there. Dan, thanks so much again for your time and for joining us here on Prices at the Pumps. We'll look forward to chatting with you again next week. Let's plan that. Thanks so much, Scott. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now.